Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the, uh, I don't even know the day, 17th of January 2023. Uh, today we have myself, Tamia Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Stéphane Merle, Mark Waite, Kevin Martins, and Bruno Verarten. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So announcement, uh, the weekly uh, process is going well. Tags are okay, packaging and ima Docker image are almost finished if not already, and checklist in progress. Am I correct, Mark? That is correct. Cool. Do you have other announcement, folks? None from me. None for me. So we can proceed with the upcoming calendar. Um, next release is the 23, is that correct? We are 17, no, 24. Next LTS, I have no idea. I haven't looked at the calendar and I'm asking for help. <laughs> So I let I will look it up. I believe it is February. Hang on, it's on the calendar. So February eight. Yes, February eight. Two dot three seventy five dot three. The release lead is Alex Brandis. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, Jenkins advisory. Do we have a publicly advertised advisory? We don't. So, an A. And next major event will be FOSDEM, the first week of February, as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. Some of us uh, will be there, some of us, alas, won't be. Sorry, folks. <laughs> there any comment about calendar? No upcoming event that we forgot. Okay, so let's get started with the walk. We, we were able to completely finish. Um, so, add Jenkins Infra IO component to CI Jenkins IO and Infra, Infra CI Jenkins IO. So that experimental work from Gavin is going less experimental and it needs a professional uh, continuous integration. That's why that has been moved from GitHub Action to Jenkins. Is that a polite way to say it? <laughs> Thanks, Hervé, for taking care of helping uh, Gavin. Uh, one of the main takeaways that Gavin is using a nice tool named Playwright, which is a NPM uh, dependency, which allows you to run tests on a web browser. Um, so that kind of tool exists since one decade, but that one seems to work quite easily, but required some system dependencies that we had to install. So Gavin is now working with a, a Docker image that he was able to test and check for that specific project. And we are going to install that tool uh, or ensure at, that at least the dependencies, required dependencies are there. So any developer could install it if needed without requiring an apt-get install whatever command, which is not allowed in production, of course. Thanks, Gavin, for the huge work on that area. GitHub app for plugin ILF scoring. So thanks, Hervé. Uh, you helped uh, uh, Adrien. As far as I can tell, the, the GitHub app sounds installed and ready. Now it's a matter of providing the correct key to the application or the, in the correct format. Yes. Uh, we weren't sure if it uh, if the key had to be converted. Uh, it seems so. So, I've um, 
I've redeployed the application and we are waiting for the next probe uh, cron job to check if it's working or not. Okay, so I'm quite op optimistic that you will help and uh, both of you uh, will finish that. So nice job, folks. Um, a component uh, has been archived. <laughs> foo foo. <laughs> The name in English is fun, but in French, it's way funnier. Trust me. Fufu is like, mm, you're really crazy, crazy. Um, is it a barber? Yeah. No, I, I thought I searched for a barber. This, that's a pure Anglicism. Uh, in, in, if a French person would have done this one, it would have been Toto. T-O-T-O. -T -O. However, um, an improvement on CI Jenkins IO. Thanks, Stefan, for adding uh, AWS virtual machine based on Windows 2022. So that's an add-on to the actual Azure virtual machine Windows 2022 from last month, which means now if Azure goes down, uh, first, if Azure goes down, we still have machines in AWS and CI Jenkins IO spread the load between the two clouds and the costs. So thanks, Stefan. That was also the opportunity to clean up some labels and old configurations. So nice, thanks. <laughs> Netify site for Jenkins IO components. So Hervé, do you confirm that uh, everything is set up for giving? You're yes, muted. Uh, this was uh, an issue he created uh, when it was uh, built by uh, GitHub Action. So now it's from oh. Jenkins. We don't need this issue anymore. Okay. But still, it's a. So yeah, superseded by. Yep. Superseded by. Jenkins instead of GH, because we still have the challenge of uh, providing a Netlify token on the Jenkins pipeline instead of the GitHub action. Am I correct? Yeah, sorry? We still have the challenge of providing a token to allow yes. Netlify and, uh, deployment. So while uh, moving the, the build uh, to CI and Infra, uh, I've created a GitHub action, a GitHub app uh, dedicated to this repository. So uh, you can extract, you can use a token, a GitHub token in the pipeline. To deploy to Netlify? In Netlify is sit for Jenkins IO components. Well, it's not so correct. So, uh, the, uh, the core of the issue was he needed a, a GitHub token. Okay. He made itself uh, himself a he took care of the Netlify token and for the migration to Jenkins I had to create an npm token and a GitHub app so you could uh, use a GitHub uh, token. Okay, no, oh, is there, Netlify... is token. there are three token for this pipeline a Netlify oh, yeah. token. A npm token and a github token okay and so which netly so you already generated the netlify token in jenkins man he made it itself himself i didn't touch netlify kevin took care of it the okay. Issue was okay my question is then is it is personal netlify or is it the netlify of the jenkins infra I don't know. I don't uh, open the issue and check the comment in there. I didn't have to add to to do anything about Netlify. Okay, putting that uh, somewhere else. Um, I'm not blaming you. I, I, you look yeah. on the defensive. I'm not blaming you. I'm asking questions yeah, because I don't I, know. And I since you migrated the pipeline, you're the person with you. the most fresh memory. I don't know what to respond to you about Netlify since okay. I didn't touch Netlify. Okay. And so... Because Kevin took care of everything around Netlify. 
and okay. his previous issue uh, was requesting a GitHub token. Okay, so we have to check as a team, what is the status of the Netlify deployment website? Is it only temporary? Is it only for a preview website? Because if we have a production website, we should use the Jenkins Infra Netlify that is used for other websites. Uh, okay, that it's closed and it's okay. We had the uh, account, next issue is an account related issue that has been solved from my yeah, point can of you, view. Can you please read the title? So, uh, I remember it was, I translated it on Google and it was something like, uh, I've been uh, cooked by the anti-spam system, but in Russian. <laughs> yeah, so, and I've replaced the title on GitHub now because I I would never remember that translation. I don't receive an email with a password. I'm trying to register with another email. So I, I put it, pasted in what Google Translate says. Okay, so I've checked, but that was weird because the person opened a, a twin issue. So I triggered the password reset and I checked that the SMTP relay was okay based on the logs in the printed. And it say the Gmail SMTP received the email. So if that person doesn't see any email on their mailbox, I can't do anything for them. So I told them to look their spam and we'll see. That one was weird because using two unrelated emails with two unrelated account name word. Anyway, HSTS block uh, use of trusted and third CI, the Gen GenSec team, security team was blocked when using Chrome to reach both controllers because for both of them, we use private channels, either SSH tunnel or VPN private. And uh, both of a uh, private VPN, sorry. And um, with Chrome, since publicly the Jenkins.io domain says that all the subdomain require HSTS, which say, um, which tell the browser to always switch to HTTPS with a valid certificate and don't accept a manually signed certificates, untrusted certificate, or HTTP. The thing is that in the case of these two machines, they are private and they are machines. So we use Let's Encrypt with HTTP challenge for the virtual machine usually. And in that case, since they are private machine, they cannot uh, validate the Let's Encrypt challenge for a new certificate because they are private and they are not exposed. So they cannot expose the challenge uh, to Let's Encrypt which means we need to use a DNS method where instead of exposing a challenge for an HTTP page or an HTTPS certificate, instead, the Let's Encrypt system create a DNS record with the challenge. So you don't have to expose your web server. Um, we never had time to spend on this. So I generated manually the DNS or using the DNS technique, a first set of certificate to unblock them instead of rollbacking the HSTS. Because HSTS takes time to, uh, it has a long TTL. It would have taken three months. So instead we generated a valid certificate and it, it unblocked them immediately. And so that issue links to another issue where now we need to apply an automatic renew system, one for trusted CI and one for third CI. So these are two subsequent issues now that we have valid certificate for both of them. So that's why the issue is now closed because they have a valid certificate. And worst case, we will have to run the third bot renew command manually in two months and a half on these machines if we don't succeed in automatic renew. Maven 387 is now generally available for developer on CI Jenkins IO. So thanks everyone involved in that, especially Stefan, but not only, Herverse did his work. Uh, we haven't heard about any issue with that Maven version. And it's all, all container machines and setups. And thanks Mark for adding it to the, new, the CPUZ machine. <laughs> 
we had an LTS release last week and all of our instances were updated, like, um, at least the one using LTS version. So thanks everyone on that part as well. I wasn't available that day, so thanks Stefan and Hervé for backing me up on that area. That proved that the team is not dependent on me on these areas, which is a good thing, which is healthy. Any question about the job being closed or can we switch to the to the work in progress? I don't want to cover the close as not planned because these are free account related issues. Uh, just a, a personal thanks for the HSTS thing. It's a lot easier to deal with trusted CI and cert CI now that they've got SSL certificates. Thank you. I, I know that's more work still to be done, but thank you very much. My dealings with them are simpler now, thanks to that. <laughs> So happy, happy that everyone uh, was able to simplify the, the life of other teams then. Um, the work in progress issue. We spend a lot of time as a team in mob programming with the, um, the automatic update of that certificate only for trusted CI Jenkins IO. So that machine doesn't run on Azure. It runs on AWS and the DNS records are stored in Azure, which means we had to put an, a structure, a permission structure to have a technical account, allow to create and remove DNS record only for something trusted CI Jenkins IO for the DNS challenge and nowhere else. We don't want that technical user being able to change record for let's say pkg.jenkins.io. So manually, if you do everything manually, that works very well. We validated that as a first step, but then automating that permission model with Terraform and the Azure API was quite an issue. Thanks a lot, Tim, for pointing us to the element that we missed or misunderstood. And thanks, Stefan Hervé, for rubber ducking with me and asking a lot of good questions, which allowed us to succeed on that area. But yeah, we spend, uh, one day and a half <laughs> on that topic. We learned a lot on the process. So now we have to apply two puppets to change the uh, Let's Encrypt uh, system to use DNS. So we need to play around with puppets. But the good news is that since we manifested ourselves on the puppet Let's Encrypt module saying, we are interested in the support for DNS Azure last week, they already merged the pull request that was uh, stalling for months and they released the whole thing. So we should be able to not deal with cert bot binary at all and do it all in pure puppet. So the change should be minimalistic for us. So almost there. And thanks everyone involved on that part because that wasn't easy. And thanks for the moral support folks because I was on the verge of throwing my laptop through the window yesterday. <laughs> So a new issue taken by Stefan about Playwright tool that we mentioned earlier. So Stefan is working on that. We know it works on the context of Docker image. Now the goal is to move it to Packer images. The, the reason is because we want to put every builds in the near future on only the Packer image container image. So we don't, we need to install it and transplant the changes we did on the web builders. We had a new issue from Gavin about sourcing index.html index for get Jenkins IO. Uh, we didn't have time to work on that. We should be able to do it next week. Um, rem, uh, reminder, get Jenkins IO is a mirror system hosted on Kubernetes. The Kubernetes system has two web services. The first one is a mirror hosting and the other one is a mirror redirector. The mirror hosting system is a web server serving files from an Azure centralized bucket. And the redirector redirects. When you have a request, it goes through the redirector. And if the redirector finds the file, it gets a hash. And from the hash on its database, it decides to redirect one of the closed mirror or to serve the file as a fallback. In the case of the index.html file, we need that the root file on the bucket 
that one was moved manually in the buckets. The request from Gavin is, can we source it somewhere so it can be changed? The goal is in, in his case is to add the web components. So anyone going to get Jenkins IO or one of the mirrors at the roots, if they mirror the index HTML, to have a, a proper web page. So I propose, uh, um, so sorry, I am. I'm a, I'm a bit tired, so I forgot to reschedule to reschedule the, the, the task. So that task needs to be finished during the upcoming iteration. Is there any voice against that choice? Sure. Plus one for me. Okay, play Same. right. Same. It's not top priority. But it sounds like it's almost done. So is it okay to finish it during next iteration, Stefan? Oh yes. About the get Jenkins IO. I'm not able to evaluate the complexity of that task. At first glance, it should be easy getting the index HTML and putting it somewhere. But we might need a process to, to uh, deploy it from the source. So that might be a task that could spawn across different milestones. I propose that we keep it for next one and anyone volunteering can assign themselves if they want to start working on that and I might help or do it by default. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Yeah, although I think it'd also be okay to say, no, we're gonna wait one more milestone. The, it, I don't think that this one will harm Gavin if it has to wait a little bit. Okay, I have a personal matter that there is that Gavin asked us an IRC three weeks ago. And oh. Almost every day I ask him either public or privately, can you open an issue for that please? <laughs> so I will feel okay. bad if we don't take it now, even if it's not prior, but that's only personal. So if, if it bother anyone else, I don't mind taking it because of that. <laughs> Well, and that's a good, that backstory is a good reason to do it. That makes sense. Okay. Um, we had a new issue. And that one, I don't mind waiting for this one. I will add a message. Because last time I had an exchange with that user, the exchange was quite complicated. Um, so uh, I will add a message and a reschedule for later. That's related to the way uh, CentOS Red Hat mirrors are managed. And basically I don't want to provide any more support for that person because that's how they handle mirror management on their own infrastructure. So either they use a standard mirror or not my problem. Besides they are using uh, really old version of Jenkins. So I would say, mm, maybe you should upgrade one of the free older LTS at least. <laughs> um, so no objection if I move it to infra team sim next and I get a message. Yeah, no objection at all. We don't, we don't owe anyone support for their private infrastructure. Yeah. Um, I still plan to just throw an eye and decide if it's an issue. There might be an issue now, Hone, so I just want a sanity check for, from someone of us, but when time will come. Um, next issue, bump Terraform module for AWS EKS. So that one was moved on that milestone back because we weren't able to, um, uh, so, sorry, Stefan discovered that there was uh, an older cluster consequence of that issue that had to be cleaned up to avoid uh, spending too much credits on AWS. And we have a solution for the Let's Encrypt setup on that one. Now that we're able to do it for trusted CI, there is no, we can use the same method on uh, the permission level on Azure to let that cluster to create record on the, the correct DNS. So that one, we should be able to solve it quickly. Besides, based on what Mark extracted from the GFROG data, the artifact caching proxy might be a bit more important than what we say during the past two months. 
So we need that cluster fixed. That's why I propose that we add that one to the next milestone. But first we finish trusted CI and then we update that one. Um, exclude non-numeric plugin version from update center. Thanks, Mark, for forwarding the discussion to the correct uh, people. I saw there has been a pull request directly on the update center. Um, I propose that we remove any milestone from this one because we don't have any yes. more expected action and the course of uh, the course of action will be that pull request being accepted or merged on update center. So it's outside our scope. Is that okay, okay. for everyone? Agreed. And, and the pattern I specifically asked Daniel Beck a while ago, I have merge permission to the update center repository, but I asked him specifically, do you prefer that I exercise that permission or not? And his preference is that I not exercise that permission. So he would rather be the one who merges all changes to update center. And I like that. That is perfect. He maintains it very well. So even though I have permission and others should take the same advice, I think, rather than any of the rest of us doing any merge to update center, it's much better that we let Daniel decide when he's ready to merge it. Perfect. And given the title of the pull request, once if that pair is merged, then that will close the issue on desk back because it's the same. Uh, so we don't have to worry about cleaning up the issue. Thanks, Mark. Uh, renew the signer certificate for Jenkins. So for that one, we need to work on that, Mark, but we, neither of us had time. Olivier is okay to help us to give, share information. So I propose we keep it that one up because we, that will be required. Realize repo Jenkins CI org mission. So we have a record here. Mark is the seventh biggest consumer, as far as we can tell for December, on that repository. <laughs> that is another proof that Mark is our testing person for Jenkins. And I'm sure Jenkins will collapse if Mark Home Lab wasn't able to run. <laughs> So, so there are lots of things that we get from that, that data analysis and we'll take action on those, right? We've got several places that we need to, we need to improve, including more caching on my home lab and, <laughs> and, and more caching on ci.jenkins.io. And, and we've got some consumers that we're reasonably confident are, are not contributing enough to the Jenkins project to justify the bandwidth they're using. So we will take active measures to ask them to stop. And we may even take active measures to prevent their access rather than just being nice and asking them to stop. So one of the takeaways, we will, we will have to confirm, I will have a message on the issue after the GFROG meeting tomorrow. We have two meetings, one uh, Stefan, Hervé and I and Mark, about Mark will show us the data and how to treat it. And then Mark and I will have a meeting with GFROG to ask them to send us, if possible, weekly reports to discuss about what Mark discovered. But one of the takeaways is that um, we, we need to confirm by with the real IPs, but we have, um, let's say, a, a gut feeling that our infrastructure is still consuming a lot. So the work that Hervé did on the caching proxy might have way more impact than what, than what we expect, which means the work on private gates and public gates, the two new cluster with the network solving is top priority in order to put the ACP back. Um, the rest will be exchanges with GFROG to ask if we can ban some IPs that marks uh, so that mark discover were high consumers. I don't give name right now. And eventually, if GFROG doesn't have any objection, the whole authentication of repo one or uh, cache or mirrors and the LDAP in high availability modes that are closely related that topic might be uh, deprioritized with the other steps first, because we cannot treat all the tasks at the same time. We have to sequentialize, and the ACP might make more sense for now. Right. Yeah. 
the the data the data the data bandwidth or the bandwidth data certainly supports the artifact caching proxy being a crucial part of this of this F effort because a big chunk of the actual data transfer that I saw is really right from our own releases repository. So it's delivering our own bits to ourselves. They prioritize unless she object. So thanks a lot, uh, Mark, for that bunch of information that help us prioritizing and choosing carefully our tasks. So that issue keeps being on the milestone. Um, Hervé, your turn, private Kate, can you give us a status? Mm, didn't, uh, uh, not a lot of progress since uh, last week. Uh, no I've got the certificate ready. Um, let's unscript the certificate ready. I'm currently trying to run the Kubernetes management job on this uh, cluster. Um, so yes, uh, experimentation about uh, this job. Uh, if and when uh, this uh, job uh, is running uh, correctly, uh, we will be able to back up uh, the current phrase uh, Jenkins IO um, data and uh, move it to this new cluster. Then we will be able to to move the DNS record to point to this new cluster. Nice, that's quite clear. That's that's a sane battle plan. <laughs> Thanks. Migrate DNS upgrade and benefit and profit after cleaning up. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, that's cool. Don't forget the pull request to add the the outbound IP uh, to Kubernetes management. I'd like to know how I can identify it. Also, but yeah. Can you start by persisting it, and then you will think about automating. Otherwise, what happens is that you will spend three days automating a five-minute no, task. <laughs> we all do. You're not alone <laughs> on, that, on, on that war. <laughs> um, mirror start, report wrong results. I didn't make um, any progress on it. No, I was. I didn't have time. I proposed to move it back to infra team as suggested last week. I was uh, yes. too eager uh, because I told I was going to help you and neither you and I had time. So I propose we remove Asini. Uh, we might spend some time on it, but I propose let's see later. I would even yeah move it in yeah, definitely not for next week. Blocked from creating a new account by the anti-spam system. Hmm, might be an issue to close. Mm. Oh, no. no. They we, tried. Yeah. OK. We had did it again. Came back to it, and we didn't. OK. And it's on me. I forgot it was on my side, and I didn't check it. So definitely to be done uh, next milestone. Old inbound agent publish as latest. Hey, that one on trusted CI Jenkins IO, it's been numerous months, where an, a set of old tags on the agent images, inbound agent and SSH agent, these old tags are rebuilding. Sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly. We weren't able to find why, and we thought it was a bug or a weird behavior. But today we were able to find uh, one of the causes. Maybe there might be other causes, but one which is plausible. Um, let me open that commit that we push on SSH agent. Can anyone see what this commit does? It's important, so I prefer sharing the information. That pipeline instruction says for that pipeline, so for that specific tags, all the tags that had a Jenkins file with that instruction in the past, 
once they have been parsed, so one build triggered, read the Jenkins file and say, oh, I need an additional trigger at pipeline level, not at multi-branch level. That's the trick part. And the pipeline say, oh, I will try to pull the SCM. And if, if I see any change, I will rebuild myself. That mechanism used to be there before, uh, it's from an era before webhooks, before multi-branch pipelines. And in that era, we were using a PolyCM because we were using branches. But first of all, PolyCM does not make any sense for a tag. Second, we don't need a PolyCM. We have a multi-branch pipeline, which takes care of, oh, at least once a day, let me scan the whole repository and decide if a build should be triggered or not. And all the analysis that Mark, Daniel, Tim, Hai, and other people did was to check the multi-branch setup with build strategy that say, if a tag is older than three days, then consider it should not be built, only discovered. Which work well. We demonstrated each time you manually scan, it work as expected and as configured. So that setup is okay. But now the challenge is these old tags, we don't want to change all the old tags from the past to remove that from these old tags, but these tags already have the polling enabled. So I've asked the question on different locations and I'm waiting for answers. If there are a way to disable polling SCM at the multi-branch level, that will be easy. Otherwise, I suspect I should be able to run a magical grep command to remove from the config XML the directive polling SCM from the triggers. That will be really ugly, but I expect it to work. Um, another solution will be to recreate the multi-branch from scratch. That they would check all the tags and say, oh, these tags are old. I won't try to build them, meaning I won't parse the Jenkins file and I won't enable polling SCM. So that one can be tested immediately on Docker agent and Docker inbound agents. For SSH agent, we will have to wait a few days because yeah, it was done five hours ago. So of course, the previous tag released yesterday of that image will have the polling and then we will go back on that problem again. So issue has been commented and we definitely need to work on that. We worked, uh, the three of us on that one for knowledge sharing. Uh, yeah, James, ask you, uh, you will see later, if we okay. need to keep the old job in CUI. I... No, uh, it has been back up, backed up already. And I don't mind removing it because most of these tags have a build, uh, build rotation policy. So Jenkins already deleted the builds, the last succeeded builds. And that's why the policy M keep rebuilding because it lost the previous one. So it's a before nothing. So of course it's from no noun state to code. It's a, oh, new code I have to build, but it fails of course. So that's one of, that's a reason explaining that behavior. We might have other surprise like we did. So creating new multi-branch job from scratch would also ensure that we have a clean state to start with. Any question? So we keep working on that one. Uh, finally, account Jenkins say you admin access for Stefan. I did not have time to check on that one. Stefan, are you mad if I move that one to infra team next to be sure that we work because clearly we had too much issues on our plates for that milestone. So oh, I'm not will, sure we'll have time on that one. That will cost you a coffee when you see me, but that's okay. Okay, so let me click on that one. It's a, it's an acceptable cost. <laughs> Thanks for your understanding. Okay, uh, on the backlog, uh, I don't think we had, so I'm checking for the new issues first. Do we have new issues that we don't have either on the backlog or, oh, that one we just removed. 
no new issues that are not on the current uh, uh, milestone or on the backlog, right? So now I'm looking at the backlog just one time. If you see an issue that is catching your eye, don't hesitate. Mm -hmm. I see a new message on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I propose, okay, I don't see other thing that we absolutely need to proceed. I'm private, okay, I test back up maybe, but yeah. Okay, that one can be ignored. What? Cluster backup, yep. Mm, yep, of course, that's part of what you're doing. It's not, uh, yeah. it's not really about migrating this cluster. It's more about having a backup of our cluster. Okay. Do you want to start working on that one? No, at least thinking. Running against the uh, issue, no, maybe not okay. right now. No problem. Uh, I don't think we should plan for more and see if we can terminate our, our other issues. If we are able, then we will take on the backlog. Just a few things for next week. We will have to start thinking about the Ubuntu 2204 campaign because we have a lot of machine on 18.04 and 20.04. 20.04 is okay because it's five years support for LTS. Okay. But we have a lot of machine on 18. We can upgrade this machine in place. We can migrate these machines to new machines with updates, or we can change architectures. I don't mind, but we have to think about that. And as Hervé found in December, we are now able in Azure to get Ubuntu 22, which means we should be able to update the agent virtual machine and container templates to Ubuntu 22. So it's not priority for this milestone, but we have to go. Everything is green for going that direction. And we have to do it before April as well, obviously, because that means all machine in 1804 won't be supported anymore starting May. A bit more pressing though, Kubernetes update. We will have to schedule the next uh, 1.24, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, we risk to have one of our providers stop uh, stopping to support that version. If it's okay for everyone, I mention it now. So I plant the seed. And next week we can start scheduling based on where we are with the, the rest of the priorities. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Cool. Those were the two main topics. I don't have any more topics to either discuss, right? Yeah. Yep. Prepare me to, to create uh, a new public cluster and pair yep. with Stefan. Absolutely. Um, I propose that we sequentialize so that your mind is not overloaded. Is that okay for you? Yes. Okay. Um, if you are waiting for builds to take one hour to finish and your mind is free, um, I propose that you start thinking about the battle plan. So then you prepare on one issue that you can exchange on a written form with Stefan before you start discussing the two of you of what needs to be done. Is that okay for you? So first a written battle plan on the issue that is okay. And as soon as you start synchronizing with Stefan, then you can move to the current milestone, the related issue. Is that okay for you? That gives you enough space to think and start thinking and start preparing the battle plan without forcing you to do it at all costs. So you can focus on private gates. Does that make sense for you in the way you used to work? Yes. Cool. Okay. I don't have any other topics. Do you have uh, some or can we close? 
So again, thanks everyone for the huge work you are all doing and see you next week. So I'm now stopping the recording.